chat, what's up? YouTube viewership, what's up, man? This is the Nita Podcast. This is episode 20. This has been 20 weeks in a row. Been nonstop, have not missed a week. And I can do this mostly because of Nerd Street. My guy Dre in the back and my guy Griff that's here. Uh, they help me the most. They're the ones that put this all together. All I do is come here and talk. And ultimately, I can't do this without you guys watching. So if you're in the YouTube, ch if you're in the YouTube broadcast, please hit the like button. Please comment, man. If you want to watch these live, you guys can check out my Twitch channel. The link is below in the description. So make sure you guys do that too. So I appreciate all you guys coming by. Last week we got we talked about some other things, you know, a little bit deeper than Madden. And this week, it was kind of a slow week. Everybody's preparing for the Madden Challenge. That's coming up, and I believe in two weeks now or like a week and a half. Uh, so that will be a, a big deal. That will be the third major of the year. So most people are prepare for preparing for that, but also people are playing a lot of uh, salary cap still. Salary cap is still the best mode people play online. It's still the best mode that people gamble on. So it's been pretty quiet. But so far, pretty much the biggest news or the biggest situation thing that happened in Madden this week was this patch they put out. Um, and I, I, I got to go back to, like, patches have been kind of a big deal within the last, I want to say, five years or so, especially since, uh, especially since, you know, since Madden's become online and this big and esports have become this big and, and and they're always trying to fix the game. And ultimately, everybody has a boss and everybody has somebody they have to please with the patch. And, you know, Madden's a tough a tough thing because, obviously, you guys follow me. I'm We're all on the competitive side. That is what we gear ourselves to. But it's so limited in the competitive side because it's really not that many people that, that play competitively. You know, obviously, we all think there's a lot on us, but there's probably only <laughs> a couple hundred, maybe at the most – 500 people that really play this game competitively and uh you know there's there's millions that play the game casually and ultimately we have to realize that that if you're a business that's e who ea cares about you know they don't care about us to you know it's such a small it's such a small minute part of madden the competitive side and they really don't care about us and, and ultimately the ones that complain the most are probably the kids playing at home or the people playing CFM. or they, they probably complain a lot more than we do. They probably want the game changed a lot more than we do. And the people that aren't as good at the game probably want the game changed a lot more than we do. And that's essentially what, I mean, I think we all realize that. And I think that's the first step when you get into Madden is realizing that the competitive side is just, it's just not a big deal, man. It's really not. Even with the MCS, even with esports getting that big, Madden will ultimately always pretty much be a game for casuals, you know. And that's who they have to appease to because that's who they sell most of their game to. That's who they sell their mutt cars to. That's who they sell the game. Everybody, that's who plays it mostly. And that's ultimately who they have to, have to you know, do these patches for and essentially make the game easier for these people. And I think a lot of, obviously, the, some of the patches take out things that are over-effective. I think in the past... A patch would only be there if something was super, super glitchy, like a real flaw in the game. And, and honestly, throughout the, the year, like, you know, throughout this whole year, I don't think there was anything in the game that was super flawed, that was super like this has to be taken out. And I don't think there was anything like that. I don't know if I can remember chat, Twitch chat, if you guys remember anything this year where it was something that, is there anything that, you guys think was overpowered or anything that was too good that had to be taken out, man. That's pretty much what I'm thinking, uh, I mean, was was really bad. You know what I mean? Because in the past, maybe the patch has been here for something that's super, you know, and that's when they need to patch something. Now I think it's just kind of tuning stuff and people complaining and not taking the chance to really find out what's what's uh how to stop certain things or how to block, you know, these contains. Oh, the contain blitz was too good. So we, you know, a casual player will play against DB Fire Contain. This, you know what I mean? The the they'll complain about the Contain Blitz, and it'll get you know they can't block it, they can't figure out how to protect against it. Now they're getting screamed at by Milton and and Akeem King and whoever the hell is getting after the quarterback. So now EA's response to that is let's just completely remove Contains from the game. Contains are, if you have Contains on your field, you might as well just <laughs> put the controller down on defense. But uh, so I, I just think a lot of the patches, we have to remove our views from this is the competitive side and just look at the patches as something that's for the casual player, man. And and I don't know what this last patch was. Obviously, I think 
the main thing they were trying to address was the aggressive catch. Where, to me, I mean, obviously the aggressive catch was pretty wild. It was getting kind of outrageous. But at the same time, you guys can agree and disagree with me. Most aggressive catches, when they catch them, they kind of have a little bit of separation. Not necessarily like they're wide open. But if you if Randy Moss is like, you know, three feet or, or two, three, four yards away from somebody, I mean, he, he's going to make a play. Even though he gets he, – he one hand catches it, gets sucked into an animation, holds on to it. I mean, I – there were some that were absolutely ridiculous, especially curls and hitches and stuff. They were pretty bad. But some of the high balls I see, like, guys are kind of open. You know what I mean? Like, not 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 wide open, but they kind of have a step, man. And, you know, I think if they were to tune the aggressive catch, that's fine. But the biggest issue, one, I, I me personally, I probably played, you know, probably 10 hours since the last patch. Haven't noticed a huge difference in the aggressive catch. And the biggest thing that, that got put into this game for me, obviously you guys all play, is this fall forward animation that pretty much came out of nowhere. I don't know where this fall forward animation came from. I don't know why um, it was randomly put into the game. I don't know what they were trying to fix that all of a sudden now my quarterback's getting sacked, but the defender's grabbing him and throwing him five yards ahead of the line of scrimmage. I don't really – because to me, and I, you guys can attest to this, I don't think these animations were in the game before this patch, I swear I never saw some of these animations get put into the game, man. So now I played Juan last night and him running with Joe Mixon and Joe Mixon getting four or five yards after every run is like, it's just tough. And and honestly, and this goes to what the fall forward animation is cool. I mean, I don't really think it's, when I look at the plays that it happens on, some of them are dumb, like quarterback sneaks should never get really a fall forward. I mean, but some of the running plays, man, the running backs should fight for a little bit more yardage, man. That's definitely something that running backs do, but to put that in the middle of the game, especially two weeks before a major, is, is a big deal. It I think it drastically changes how, how the game's going to be played. I think it benefits people that are going to run the ball. It definitely benefits people running the ball, trying to run the clock out of the game, trying you know trying to get that short yardage situation. It's definitely something that's tough for them to put into the middle of the game, man. So I don't know what their goal was with this fall forward thing, what caused it. And, and at some point, when I look at this fall forward animation where they put this new patch in the game, you know what I mean? They put this new patch, right? So, okay. So we have X amount of people at EA that, put, that are met, work on Madden. So we put this new patch. Let's get together and say, guys, man, let's try this patch out. You know, because we all played the game after the patch. It only took us a couple minutes to realize, like, damn, all my players are falling forward. This is, this is dumb. My quarterback in sack, my running back in three, four yards after he gets hit every time. At what point did they try this patch and see, you know what, this is happening, this is not a good thing? You know, maybe this patch is not ready to go out. That, that's what I got a question about it, man. But ultimately, I think, and, and I've heard this from people at EA, that a lot of times, I mean, they have to make the game easier. And I don't know if this fall forward thing is like something to make the game easier. And you say, why do they have to make the game easier? Because so these casual players keep playing the game. You know, no one's going to play a game of Madden where they can't score the football. Even if they're the best defensive player in the world, with all the games out right now, all the video games people can play, nobody's going to play a game of Madden. No kid between the age of 13 and and 18 is going to play a game of Madden where they can't score the football. And ultimately, that's what they need. They need people playing the game. So I think a lot of the tuning, a lot of the patches are to make the game easier. You know, and I don't know which version of Madden you guys like the most this year. I feel like this has been the most, the biggest amount of versions of Madden that we've had. And I don't know. And I, and honestly, I'll tell you this, Madden 19, I really don't think that, um, I really don't think that it was a bad game. I really didn't think it was like, oh, this game sucks. I never thought it was that level early in the year. I never thought it was like that. I thought it was pretty decent. I didn't think it was great. But I didn't think it would go on that list for Madden 18, Madden 09, and whatever other Madden you guys hated. You know, I didn't think it was on that list. I thought it was a passer's game. Any game where people had to pass is a good thing. I thought it was pretty decent. But with more and more patches, man, just the, the more outrageous and comical the game becomes, man. And I really wish I understood what the goal was with this patch and how they're looking at it. And why didn't we play this patch for a couple hours and realize, you know, this one isn't ready to go out there. Because as bad as aggressive catches were, I don't think it was like we have to fix this tomorrow. You know, I don't think that was a big deal. 
that they had to fix that like instantly, you know, and, and that's why it's like, man, they should have played this patch out. They should have went ahead and um tested it a little bit more before they put it out. But I mean, we'll see if they fix it. Obviously, I think this is the, the patch that the Madden Challenge is going to be played on. So if I'm going into a major, man, and you're looking at the players in the major, I mean, I think this really helps somebody that's going to run the ball. I think it helps Kerry Q immensely, man. If he, if there's any way he can go ahead and get, like, a Derrick Henry or whatever whatever running back he likes the most, man, if he can get even, like, a, a, a legend running back, that would be huge for Kerry. And with this fall forward thing, man, if you get to a point – where he's getting four or five yards on runs that aren't even open, like runs that aren't stopped, then th that's going to be a big deal, man. So I think it kind of affects the game a little bit uh, from that standpoint, especially because, you know, they're getting ready to play on it, and they've been playing on this patch for a while. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how the Madden Challenge goes. I'm really excited for that. But like I said, that's two weeks away, um, and it's definitely – I'm not going to talk about it next week. Not gonna I'm probably gonna talk about it in two weeks. The Madden Challenge. I'm excited for that. I feel like we. I feel like with the lack of streams, the lack of. I mean, I just feel like the only Madden we really get to watch is these majors, man. And we've done two of them already, and they they both been pretty good, honestly. Between the Classic and the Club Championship, I hope the Madden Challenge doesn't disappoint. And what's funny about the last two Madden challenges, I made both the last two Madden challenges, and they were kind of different. Like they switched the draft up, like from. From the online portion of the draft to the to the live event, they switched the draft up how it went. So we'll, I'll be interested to see how they switch the draft up, if they add new players, if they boost it, if they change it around a little bit. It was always different at the live event compared to online. We'll see if that's a little bit different. But anyway, we'll see if the patch continues to be two weeks away. I mean... That's the patch. You know, we uh, we pretty much all hate it. We pretty much just gotten negative feedback. And one of the things that uh, I, I, I know EA, because I have talked to other people at EA, you know, and they're disappointed and they continue to be disappointed with the feedback that they get, not only from pro players, but from the casual players and just the negativity that they get. And just, I mean, you'll see Clint post something. He posted something this week about, I forget, it was a, uh, you know, I'm proud of my team, blah, blah, blah. And after that, that's just opening yourself up for the kids, for the trolls just to kill you, man. And and, and they're kind of disappointed with some of the feedback that they get. But, I mean, if you're going to put yourself out in the open, you know, if you're going to make yourself available on Twitter, if you're going to make yourself available on the standard, whatever you're available on, you know, you are going to get aired out. With the, you know, th with that comes the trolling. It comes the kids airing you out, throwing tomatoes at you, just telling you you're doing a shitty job. Because they I, ultimately they are the consumers, man, and if they feel like they're doing a bad job. They're going to troll you, man, and that's definitely a uh, shout out to KD with the sub, man. It's definitely uh, something that they're going to open themselves up to. And I've always we said in the beginning, man, maybe it's not a great idea for these EA, you know, developers to be active on social media because what happens is they are super targets for these people that are mad about the game. And people that blame the game essentially on them, on the EA rather than themselves. But that's a topic for another time. I just wanted to talk about the patch and, and the biggest things about it. Obviously, I feel like the aggressive catch is the same. And I feel like there's fall forward animation. And the biggest thing I ran into last night was, like, when I try to do my adjustments, sometimes my icons would just go through the roof. And a lot of times, video, not even man players, but video games in nature, nature are creatures of habit. Like, I know the press just like Mortal Kombat used to be. You buy back, back, down, up, back, back, down, B, and you shoot a fireball, or you throw the scorpion little harpoon. That's how mad it is. Y, Y, down, or Y, Y, right, baseline, press, blah, 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 the quarter of this guy clip. And now all of a sudden my icons are switching out of nowhere. And I don't know how. It's just frustrating that that randomly happens. And, and, and there's not nothing worse in the game than for your icons to be randomly switched. All of a sudden you're trying to put – your outside corner in a quarter, and you're putting your free safety in a spy. It's like it makes no sense. And I don't know. And I don't know if you guys have experienced these icons switching crazy. Last night it probably happened. I would probably say on uh, maybe 15 to 20 percent of my plays defensively, and it's just it's just a feeling of just like helplessness when it does happen. And I don't know where that came from. So I feel like this patch ultimately more bad stuff happened from this patch than good things. Aggressive catches the same. Now we're falling forward. Now we're a quarterback sneak from the five-yard line, 
and now we're what's, now my icons are switching all over the place. So I don't really know exactly what happened from this patch that was any good. And like I said at the beginning, I don't know what was in the game this bad that had to be patched at all this entire year. You know, but that's their decision, and they got to cater to the right people, and we are not the right people that they need to cater to, and we as a community, we got to understand that, man. But that's the patch. We'll see how it goes. We'll be talking about patches in the game and how they're changing it probably for the rest of the year. But now let's get, as you guys know, man, the NBA 2K League has taken, I mean, gaming esports, like, to another level. They really, the NBA really bought into what 2K was selling them. The NBA really bought into you know esports as a whole not only esports because you, we see the nfl the nfl is buying into esports left and right they're, they're putting Fortnite tournaments in their in their arenas during games like there is really a huge thing that i mean robert Kraft is heavily involved in the esports and a couple other things we won't get into <laughs> into detail about but he's definitely um people are definitely investing money into esports and not necessarily their own esport as we see mad nfl going to other not necessarily Madden. But the 2K has fully invested into, or the NBA has fully invested into the 2K and basketball as an esport. Now, basketball definitely works better for a draft and having team play than football does. I mean, that that's why something there's never really going to be something like the NBA League for Madden. I mean, the club series is probably the closest thing. I don't think we'll ever have a draft. I don't think. The only way I could see it happening is if it was like Crew v. Crew, which would be pretty cool. I definitely think we could they could work something like that where, you know, Crew v. Crew is three people. You play three one-on-ones, and that, that would probably be the best way to have like a team. Like the Eagles have a team. The, you know, the Broncos have a team. That would be the easiest way, I think, because team play really or like mutt squads and everything isn't really a huge part of Madden, and it's, I don't think it's ever going to be. It could be if they do it the right way, but I don't think it's something we want as competitive players. So the only way to do like a team type thing would be Crew v. Crew, in my opinion, which would definitely be pretty damn cool. But ultimately, Madden is a one-on-one -on -one game. It is me versus you, nobody else, nobody in the way, nobody else to make decisions. So in honor of NBA 2K draft was tonight, it's probably still going on right now. And I pay attention to it a little bit because I root for the Sixers in the 2K League. I don't really know too much about the other teams. I, I'm obviously I know a couple players from being uh, in the esports world and meeting a couple people here and there. But um, I root for the Sixers because they are Philadelphia. That's all. That's a cool aspect of the NBA league is that I can root for my team and my city, and I pay attention to who they draft and the players on the team. And but anyway, if somehow yes tomorrow Roger Goodell says we're going to invest X amount of millions of dollars into Madden and we're going to have a draft. You know, however we do the draft, this order, blah, blah, boom, flip it. Man, we're going to do a draft. Now, this is pretty much what I think the draft would be. It's pretty a pretty cool topic if 32 teams lined up and picked out of all the Madden players in the world. Um, this, I will tell you, this mock draft is 1,000% based on the last three years at MCS. Not necessarily this year. This year probably counts more than any other year. It's probably 50% this year, and then maybe like 25% last year. You know what I mean? Like, like what you do lately is probably most important, but it also takes stock of what you did in the last three, four years because that's important. You know, you got to build some type of um, some type of clout, essentially, you know, and a lot of it has to do also with what else you're doing, man. I mean, because sometimes if I'm drafting somebody on my team, I mean, I want that person – you know, I want that person to be active. I want that person to be notable. I want that person to be the center of attention sometimes. Some teams may want that. Some teams may not. They might want the more quiet kid. They might want Blocky. Other people might want Joel. Other people might want Clef. I mean, then other people might turn around. They want somebody that doesn't do anything. They just stay to their own and play the game. You know, it's just different what different teams will want. And I'm going to go over these 32 people I picked and also go over some players that did get snubbed, and we'll talk about man. I, I think my list is pretty good. I am not on any of these lists. I did not include myself in any of these lists. I'm not competing right now, so I don't know if I would be in the draft if they had a draft. But if they did have a draft, I would come back 1,000%. But I'm not competing, so I'm not on this list. I fully expect if there was a draft, I would hope to be a top 10 pick, but I'm not on my list. So regardless, we're going to get into this, and the first thing I got to put – now, listen to this. The first pick of the draft, it's still Skimbo. Now, he lost the last two tournaments, 
you know, he did not make the live event. He came up short one game making the last live event. But he's still the three-time champion. He's still the top earner in the MCS era. He's still probably the biggest name, I mean, outside of problem. And, you know, I mean, for me, it's still the first pick. But because of the last two tournaments coming up real short in the last two tournaments, it's definitely, it's definitely closing the gap. It's definitely tough. It's definitely – he's definitely passable now as far as the draft would be. But I fully expect if an NFL team had the first pick in the draft, their first pick would be Skimbo. Like I said, still the three-time belt winner. Nobody has two. Uh, although the regs belts, we're going to start – we're going to start questioning the regs belts a little bit. A little bit different tournament. So, I, But, you know, I, I'll still give it to him. I'll still give it to him. So – but like I said, you guys could argue it. I don't think there's anybody that you can really put over Skimbo right now. So he's still the number one pick in the draft. I still think, do you guys think anybody else would get picked number one? Number two pick in the draft is a kid that, if Skimbo wasn't here, would probably have way more belts. And last year, he did beat Skimbo to give himself life. And the second pick in the draft got to be Kiv. Kiv, obviously, one of the most talented man players. He would probably be picked second. Like I said, if it wasn't for Skimbo, if you look back in Kiv in the last, like, three years in the MCS, man, if it wasn't for having a matchup with Skimbo all the time, Kiv could have way more money, and he could probably have a couple belts. Because I think the DC, the Draft Champions Tournament, the Man Challenge that Beast Mode won, I thought Kiv was the best player. Uh, Kiv was unreal that tournament, man. Skimbo was just as good, and then he laid down. But I thought Kiv was really good in that Draft Champions Tournament there. Bang. I thought that was really, he was really good in that one. Even the man bowl that I won, Kiv was really good then, and he had a hell game with Skimbo where he's actually up by 10, I believe, and he let Skimbo come back. So it's definitely been – they've definitely had some battles for sure. Kiv obviously won the $100,000 Ultimate League last year. He needs to go ahead. I don't know – I don't really know the point situation because I'm not really in it, and I'll, definitely something we'll talk about soon is, like, where everybody is with points, what people need to do for this man challenge in a, in a preview show, probably – figure that out next week but Kiv is in a good spot just made the man challenge so hopefully he'll make a run in that uh so he's definitely the second pick third pick in the Madden draft I gotta go with Drenny Drenny is on the list Madden challenge uh champion last year Madden ultimate league runner-up won the uh, won the Cowboy won the Broncos club series won the Cowboys club series this is only his second year competing signed with complexity Probably, I mean, obviously, shoot, Drenny's probably top five player on everybody's list. Uh, he's young. He's part of the Disney movement that Madden is going in. That's that's kind of one of the reasons I think a lot of the games have been falling, Kiv and Drenny's way, is because they are part of that Disney movement where they're going for the youth. I talked about Madden trying to cater to certain kids between the age of 13 and 18 to play their game, and I think that's a lot of the reason why Kiv and Drenny get a lot of things going their way. You know what I mean? They are part of the Disney movement. It's tough for them. Now, this is where it starts. Because I think there's not a man alive that can argue with those three picks. I I think those three picks are pretty solid. Chat, chat, YouTube comments, you guys can tell me these three picks are pretty damn solid. Talk to me, chat. Like, I feel like these can't really be argued. Now, if you want to put Journey over Kiv or you want to say Skimbo lost the last two events, let's move them down. I think these three are pretty solid. Like, these are, like, I don't think these can, this is probably everybody's top three, right? I think these are good. Now we're going to move on. Fourth pick in the draft, Ghost Madden. Ghost Madden, fourth pick in the draft. The Madden Club Championship last year. Ghost Madden is definitely, uh, I think Ghost is one of the best players in the world. Just made the Madden Challenge again. Young player, great offensive player, man. I think he really has the, the talent to go and keep moving, man. I really think... Uh, Ghost is the fourth pick in the draft. He just made the man, like I said, just made the man challenge again. Chance to go after his second belt. Did pretty good. He's locked in for the uh, the Madden Bowl. Did pretty good. Um, like I said, in the club championship, wound up losing to Strafen. In the club championship, I think Ghost has to be the fourth pick. Uh, and the one thing about Ghost, uh, like I said, he's young. Oh, what else I want to say? Oh shoot. Oh, and about Ghost, man, if he kicked some decent field goals, Chet, he could have made a lot more money in Madden 17, where he was pretty good in Madden 17, man. And, and I think Madden 18, he was really good. And this year, he's really good. He's just getting better. He's surrounded with the right people. I think Ghost is, is a pretty good fourth pick. Number five, 
Number five, I still got to put problem on the list, man. Obviously, he's not having the year that he want this year. But if you think about, obviously, just his his just his pedigree is huge. His streaming, all this stuff, he's the biggest name in Madden. And I don't think he'll ever not be the biggest name in Madden as long as he continues to put forth effort in Madden. He's played a shit ton of Fortnite in the last month. and uh, But we'll see. I fully think uh, problems still got to be on the list. Obviously, like I said, he didn't have the, the, the year he had so far. Still has the last chance tournament to go ahead and pop. But uh, like I said, other than this year, the last two years, he's lost. Every, I feel like he's lost every final that we've had in salary cap, and that's almost as impressive as winning one. You know, I think that's a big deal when when you talk about problem. I think a lot of people say he hasn't been successful, but to lose every single final, to lose every single uh, uh, salary cap final between Ghost, between me and Skimbo, he lost all these. I mean, he definitely made some good runs. Still talented this year. Like I said, he got the last chance tournament, pretty much what it is. If it wasn't for, honestly, if it wasn't for, if this was probably starting, if I did this draft in the beginning of this year, problem's still right by, problem's still the second pick. But just because these guys, Kiv, Journey, Goals have had a little more success this year, they probably moved above problem a little bit. Uh, The next pick, next pick in the draft, I got to go with Pavin. Probably the hottest player. Obviously just won the biggest tournament of the year a, a month ago or so. Got to put Pavin up there. Also qualified for the Madden Challenge, man. He's definitely moving up. This is where the list kind of get. You know, you can talk about everything. Uh, definitely pretty much where I wanted to go and how I felt about the list. I mean, the, the champion, he's got to get his respect, and we'll see, man. If he can go back-to-back, -back, he's in position to go back-to-back. -back. And draft champions is tough because if he goes there, sits down in his draft, and gets the right book, gets the right players, he's going to have a huge advantage over the next guy, man. So best of luck to him. Hopefully he uh, gets a good show and gets a good draft, and we get to see a show, man. But he's definitely moved the list his first year. Oh, no, he competed last year, won the Raiders club, lost the problem in the club championship, man. But this year he's definitely had a great year so far, even if he stopped playing mad and he had a great year this year. So next pick in my draft – I got to go with my guy, Clef. Now, Clef hasn't had the success of these other guys, and it might be other people on here that had a little bit more success than him. But Clef has a lot more energy. A team would want to draft Clef because, one, he's a lot more notable. He's a lot more out there. He's a lot more exposure for you. That's part of the reason why I wanted Clef on my squad. You know what I'm saying? That's part of the reason why I want to recruit Clef. Because, one, we all know Clef is super talented at the game, super good at the game, had a, had a decent run in the Man Club Championship, losing the goal so I had fourth on the list in a tight game that could have went either way, obviously. And um, I think Clef would get drafted in the top ten. I think that's a pretty decent pick. Then we're moving on to the ninth pick of the draft. Oh, I think this is the eighth pick. Uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. yeah, this is the eighth pick of the draft. Blocky. The quiet assassin. We go from Clef to Blocky. Clef is allowed, obnoxious, you know what I'm saying, going to cap at you, stand up, all this stuff. Blocky just got his shorts on and his little boat shoes, and he's chilling, playing the game, just and has been super consistent the last two years and made really good runs, just missing that belt. But to make the Final Four in Ultimate League, just made the – I think, he, yeah, he made the Final Four in the club championship, locked in for Madden Bowl. Blocky is definitely one of the talented players, man. He's definitely uh, one of, uh, obviously one of the young players, but he's the complete opposite of Clef, man. He's just more laid back. A team, if they were drafting, they'd want Blocky and say, man, you know, I want to go ahead and pick Blocky because, man, he's going to stay to himself. He's not going to have any controversy with him. He's just going to pop people in, man. He's been really successful the last two years, man, and, and the sky's the limit for him to keep on growing, keep on improving. Next pick, I hate to do it, but I got to put Wesley right here, man. Wesley's been really strong this year. Choked a couple games. Also got lucky as hell over some serious, but I got to put Wesley right here. Um, I think a lot of me, Wesley, I think Wesley's super talented. I think obviously he just does what Kiv tells him to do, which is always a smart thing. Part of me really thinks uh, part of me really thinks I should do more of what Skimbo does, but, you know, I'm a little stubborn. I'm not like Wesley. I'm not just like, please teach me how to play, Kiv. That's really not my – because I feel like I'm smart enough to find my own way. And Wesley kind of fully succumbs to Kiv and pretty much to Paul's. I, don't, I, I mean, I don't want to take it down that road, but he fully just, you know, just lets Kiv teach him how to play. And it's worked so good. 
It's worked well for Wesley. I think he's super talented. He he won the uh, Texans Club Series, obviously. Won a couple of – or oh, he was the Mutthead Season 7 champion. So that's definitely uh, got it going for him. Um, so, but like I said, if he puts some games together a little bit better, I mean, he can, he can really make a run. And he's made the he made the man challenge. Another kid that's made the man challenge. A lot of these people, Kiv, Journey, Goals, Pavin, Wesley. I don't know if Blocky made. I don't. I forget the man challenge list that I had. But a lot of these guys are <clears throat> in the running to go ahead and win another belt. And the first part of winning a belt is going ahead and making a live event. All these guys are really in the uh, really in the list. Next pick on my draft, I got to go with Joke. Joke, uh, obviously one of the best players every year. Really always going to be in somebody's top ten pretty much every year for the last five or six years at least, you know. So he's always been talented. He's always kind of just, I don't want to say laid down, but, I mean, that's pretty much the word. He's always pretty much lost or, or, or came up short at the end. This year, obviously, throwing that pick six versus Pav and in the game. I don't want to say he didn't have control of the game, but he was in a decent spot to win. Do that pick six versus Pav and uh, signed to Equifax. Joke is a, a big deal, and I'm, I mean, one of the more vocal people in the community as far as complaining and getting things changed. He's always been like that. Uh, and I say he's been one of the best players, definitely one of the best defensive players in the last couple of years, and has been successful in the MCS. I mean, as much as people want to say Joke never won a belt. Joke never did this, that, and third, but he definitely has been successful when you talk about money-wise and just making runs in tournaments, man. He's definitely one of the better players, and he would be, I believe this is the 10th pick. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, 10th pick would be Joke. Then I got to go on. I got to pick uh, Strafe in here, mostly because of his run in the club championship, man. He had a great run in the club championship, Won the Vikings club the first year they had it. Lost the next year. Then he won uh, won this year and had a great run in the championship, man. He's always been a decent online player. He's always uh, <clears throat> giving people a lot of runs in different tournaments, especially uh, the, the offline race tournaments he's been pretty good in. And uh, for him to uh, make that type of run in the club championship and be locked in man bowl, win 75000 Obviously, he came up short versus Pav, and that was definitely a huge loss to, late, to lose that bad. It was embarrassing. But, uh, I mean, just coming off a win like that, making a run, beating goals. I forget who else he beat in that tournament. Damn. He beat um, Drag. He beat Canes. He beat T. Davis. Then he beat um, Ghost. That's a decent run, man. If come off that, got a lot of momentum, man. I expect him to fully, uh, <clears throat> fully whatchamacallit, get it going. Uh, and I, I fully think he's up there. And like I said, a lot of this uh, has to come with, the last three years of the man or the MCS or the last four years of the MCS. But what have you done for me recently? That's probably why I got straight from so high. I had a great run in the biggest tournament. think he would get drafted number 11. Number 12, I got to go with Mo. Mo is number 12. Mo, and I say this on the chat a million times, or I say this on the podcast, I say this in my stream, Mo is top five man player all time. Hasn't had the success he wants to have in the last – the last two years in the MCS. Last year, he didn't make anything. This year, he made the club championship, won the Saints club, had the matchup with Clef, which was the best game of the club championship and probably two of the top, you know, five, five, eight players in the club championship. So if he would have got a little easier road, you know what I'm saying, he probably would have made a, a decent run there in the club championship. But Mo, like I said, top five man player, somebody would definitely draft him. So you, you could argue Mo could be higher whatever it may be. But like I said, the last two years hasn't had the same success that he's used to having. That's why I probably got him down at uh, 12 right now. That's where I think it is. Next, I feel like my list is pretty, pretty good. I feel like this list is good so far. Chat, let me know. I feel like my list is pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? Next, I got JP. I got Canes. Canes is another one, man. You could talk a lot of these people have been one win away, and Canes was one swerve away from making, I forget, the first Madden challenge or Madden 17. Canes is definitely be good. And uh, <clears throat> I want to say, had a decent run there in the club championship, won the Bears club series twice in a row, recently just made the Madden challenge. So he's doing got a chance to make a run in the Madden challenge, make some decent money this year. Canes was in the Man Bowl live event. He had the one hour one. He was in my group, went two and one, and did not advance in my group. He Canes was the only person to beat me in Man Bowl. 
<clears throat> Whoa. Are we over here now? I can't keep typing here. Are right, we good? All right. All right, yeah, you good, you good. All right. So I got Canes right there, number 13. Uh, Next pick I got, I, I got to take Allen. This pick, if a team picked Allen, is 1,000% potential because Allen hasn't done shit this year. Law, I don't know even though went to the man went to the band classic. But all we guys know, you guys in the chat, you guys at home on YouTube, we know Allen is tough. Allen talent wise is probably top ten. And this would be a, a thousand percent this would be a, a, a super potential pick for me because I think Allen's really good and we all know Allen's really good. <clears throat> but he hasn't had that much success yet. Went to the first tournament. We all pretty much picked him to make a huge run in the first tournament. He had Jeff. He had Ward Daddy. He had. He looked like he had a decent little road. He could have went on. Lost the first game to Jeff, which was a super good performance by Jeff. But I think Allen got a lot of potential. I put him in the top 15 if there was a draft, honestly. So then we're going to move on from Allen. This is where we're going to put Manu. Manu was some person who won Panthers Club Series. I think two years in a row he won Panthers Club Series. Probably like Manu is probably like the best player to not really make a run in a live event, not make another live event of an in club series. Man, you guys are always uh pretty good. Obviously, he's been a, a great player for a couple of years now. It hasn't been able to put everything together at these events or these online events. Um, but I definitely think he made a run, and I thought he probably got cheated more than anybody in the club series event other than some serious, but. And I think he played a great game against Clef, man. He should have been up way more in that first half against Clef and uh, just fell short in the club championship. He could have made a crazy run. We're going to work on the red the red hoodie underneath the Panthers jersey was kind of holding him back a little bit. <sighs> then uh, my next pick, I got to go here. I got to go little man. Y'all going to think I'm crazy. But to already be locked in that bowl, second in uh, – Second in the Man Classic has been pretty decent the last couple of years as far as making a couple of live events. Made the Man Championship in Madden, Madden 17. Lil Man is definitely on pace. You know I'm saying he's definitely on pace to go ahead and uh, make a run in the Man Bowl. And 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 we talk about this is and I talked about this is has to do with the MCS. But Lil Man, like Joke, like Problem, like Mo, these guys have been around forever playing Madden. Been good at Madden for a long ass time, man. So a lot of that has to play into it. Like I said he's had a successful year so far, man. Because as much as they career matter, a successful year this year that matters the most. And little man has had a successful year this year. Already locked for Man Bowl. Already made a decent amount of money. Obviously he lost to Nene in the Rams club, and uh, he definitely kept moving. <clears throat> now we want to move over. And it's funny you say that about Beast Mode. Um, the next person I got on my list, I got Jay Wall next on my list. <clears throat> Mostly knocked out Skimbo, and I thought he was honestly, I think the most impressive thing he did was beat Skimbo. I thought that was the most impressive game I've ever seen him play. All the other games I've seen him play, he's been pretty, yeah, he's been pretty average. Has a lot of potential. Smart player on offense, man. Knows how to work that high-low. I don't see anybody work the high-low reads as well as Jay Wall and honestly use them as well as Jay Wall. But he works that high-wall, high-low read between the zigs, the comebacks, the curls, the corner routes, whatever it may be. He works that very well. And uh, I think he got a lot of potential. I think a team would draft him because, obviously, he looks like he's eight years old, so he's got a long way to go. This is pretty much – this isn't a list of my best man players. Pretty much like if a team was drafting, this is who they would pick. I got Jay Walt the next pick. I think he's really good, you know, and uh, I think, like I said, he lost. He wound up losing to Blocky, I believe, in the, in the club championship. And I don't know how he lost. And Oh, Clef. Clef I mean, he lost to Clef. In the, uh, he got dominated by Clef in the Madden uh, Challenge online single elimination. Uh, so, But I definitely think he got a lot of potential. I think Jay Walt's pretty good, and I think that's where he would fall right there. But this is where the list get like you can pretty much argue anybody. But I'm just talking about who I think would get drafted. Next, I gotta put Kerry Q, man. Kerry Q in the last three, four years, Deuce Close Specialist has had uh, has decent success both in regs tournaments and and the, the draft champions tournaments. He hasn't had much success when it comes to mutt. Hasn't done that much when it comes to mutt, man. 
Kerry Q definitely, I think, it, 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 and obviously we've all played him online. He's definitely a decent player, and he just recently made the Man Challenge live event. Man, you got to put that. That's pretty much between the club championship and the Man Challenge live event. I think that's a decent. Uh, that's probably the two most important things when this list is concerned, and how they did in those really. And uh, who where I got next? Shoot. Uh, after Kerry Q. I got to put Beast Mode Mac. Uh, Beast Mode down here. Beast Mode could have been higher. Definitely a belt winner. He's probably the lowest belt winner that there is. And uh, definitely, uh, other than Stiff, but Stiff didn't make the list of 32. Shout out to Stiff, man. I uh, mean, you might get drafted if we had a draft, but uh, I'm not really sure. But the biggest thing about Beast Mode, like I said, he lost in clubs. He didn't do well in the Man Classic. Didn't do too well, uh, Madden 18. But um, the thing about Beast Mode, he made the man challenge. This man challenge right here, he made that that tournament, so he has a chance to go ahead and win another draft champions belt. He does have a draft champions belt. We do say that counts as half a belt, but he definitely should be here. Uh, there it was. Uh, then we so Beast Mode. Then the next pick. I got to put Bugs on the list. Bugs got to make the list. Mostly, I'll tell you right now, chat, Bugs, you wouldn't have made the list. Bugs wouldn't have made the list if um if he didn't make this Man Challenge event. Uh, but he made the Man Challenge event. Didn't do much. Uh, whatchamacallit. Ever since Problem put them hands on him in Orlando, Bugs was kind of kind of weak. But uh, my man Bugs is back. He's fighting right now. And uh, definitely, um, Bugs is definitely ready to make a run. And honestly, I've been playing Bugs for three years now, a lot, and this is the best he's played. Seriously, um, so he's looking really strong. He's looking really good. I'm gonna move over here to move on to my rest. So I don't even know what number we're at right now. I just see my list going on right now. Next pick, I gotta pick Prodigy. Like I said Prodigy made some decent runs last year. He he won one of the Mutt Heads. And I believe he's in the, uh, whatchamacallit. I don't know. I'm not sure. I forget my little list I had of the people. Let me go bring that up real quick. Ah, uh, never mind. I can't even look at that. But anyway, Prodigy's been pretty good. So he would be my next pick to get drafted. Obviously, he signed the Noble. Be streaming a little bit. I wish he would stream a little bit more. Um... Like I said, he made a Madden Ultimate League last year, made a decent run to Madden Challenge last year. So he's definitely had a little experience, definitely got a lot going on. Young kid, so I definitely believe he would get drafted. Where am I on my list? Next pick, I got to go. Who I got to go with? Got to go T. Davis with the next pick. Bang. T. Davis been around Madden a long time. Won the Arizona Club Series, obviously. Knocked off Kib in the club championship. Uh, really starting to get his groove back into the competitive man thing. Really uh, a player that, you know, is on the rise back from where he used to be, which was like 10 years ago. And obviously went through his Lyme disease thing where he was chilling, but now he's really getting back into it. Has had a successful year so far. And like I said, um... So he knocked off Kiv, had a decent run, wound up losing to his friend Strafen. So he had a real good run over there in the club in the club championship. So boom, that's pretty much where I would pick T. Davis. Like I said, when you get this far down the list, we could argue about whoever this, that, and the third. Next person I got to put up here. Man. <clears throat> How's my list looking? Uh, next person I got to put up here is Joel. Joel is next on my list. Joel obviously did not really compete this year. He did not go all out for Madden. But if he did, a team would draft Joel. A team would draft Joel regardless just because he got a lot of energy. He got a lot of, you know, when he going to stream, when he going to promote you then. And I told you, some teams might be into that. Some teams might rather want Blocky. But like I said, Joel didn't really compete this year. That's going to hurt his stock a little bit. Uh, but he did try to come back for the Madden Challenge. I forget who he lost. So I remember watching the game he lost. But uh, Joel had a decent year, man, 18, uh, draft champions tournament. And uh, he was really good, man, 17. 
was too young to compete along with Drenny. I would say it was up to Joel. His best year would have been man 17. Man 18, uh, he was he was okay, man 18. Obviously made the final four and should have beat Kiv in the uh, draft champions tournament. So he was really good at that tournament. And uh, not so good in the ultimate league, I think. Uh, and then, like I said, this year he didn't compete. But if Joel were to com- – if there was a draft, Joel would certainly get drafted in the 32 because – I said he's a good person to promote your team, so he definitely would get drafted, obviously. Um, <clears throat> Juan, you 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 somewhere on the list right now, but honestly, I'm I'm looking at all these people. It's hard to put somebody that only people know Juan is because of a club series where nobody tried, and then went and Juan, and when somebody actually tried to win your club, you lost it. So anyway, we're gonna move on to um. Uh, who else I got on here? Next pick, I got to go with, um, this is tough right now. Now it's pretty much just names. I'm going to put Crush next. Why do I put Crush next? Crush made the man challenge. Bang. He's ready to compete again. Crush won Bengals club, won, won a round in the club championship. Obviously, we went over this game like two weeks ago when he lost a joke. When he got a little too big for his britches, bang. So that's pretty much how how, how I see Crush. But he's definitely a talented player. Uh, I think he's a little more – he got a little bit more of a mind than Wesley. I think he – I mean, Wesley just does what Kiv says, where Crush, like, works with Kiv, and he don't really just do exactly what he says, you know. And I think that might be holding Crush back. He might have to go full Wesley and just do everything Kiv says, you know. That might work for him, man, really. Uh, Next pick, I'm going to go ahead. Where I'm at, where I'm at, where I'm at. Let me go ahead and put – what I got here? I got all that list – that line done. Next pick, I'm going to pick Drag, Grandpa Drag. Drag has been around uh, as long as he's been old or as long as he's been alive pretty much. And Drag, obviously, back-to-back club uh, – Packers Club Series Championship. He kind of flirted with not playing Madden, but because the club – and this is one thing about the club series, man – you can be halfway decent. You pick the right club, man. You pretty much got it. And Drag is uh, – Packers Club made a great run in the, uh, in the in the Madden Club Championship last year. Obviously lost to Strafe in the first round. I think he lost to Strafe. In, yeah, he lost to Strafe in the first round where he made a vicious comeback. And uh, he definitely – Drag has been consistent in the club series the last two years, man. So we'll see if he go ahead and continue to put his all in the Madden right now and see how it goes, man. Uh, then what's my next pick where I'm at with, uh, next pick, I got to go Spoto. Spoto's been consistent, uh, consistently, uh, the, the word for Spoto might be consistently decent. You know, he's made the, he made the man challenge last year, just made the man challenge this year, won the Colts club series, which is, I mean, I don't know anybody else in the Colts club series and he lost the first game to some serious. So, I mean, you know, I see Spoto is upset that he's, like, number 28. And I say, like, you got to have some type of success. And a lot of these people haven't had crazy success. And that's my point. Like, obviously, Beast Mode is probably the number one man. I got a belt, man. I should be higher. But, like, a lot of these people haven't had super success in the MCS, you know. And, honestly, Bugs probably had more success than most of these guys. So, like, anyway. We're going to keep moving on my list here. Uh, who else? I don't even know what number we're at, but I just know all the names on my list and where we're at and who's going to be the uh, – I know where who's going to be the last pick of the draft. I already know that. Next, I got to pick Ice. Don't care about Ice. Ice, obviously, he lost to Skimbo in a lot of tournaments. Lost to Skimbo in the club championship last year. When he kind of embarrassed himself, but you know he was a young kid, lost to Skimbo in the Man Classic, gave Skimbo his best game in the Man Classic, then lost a tight game to J Wall. So Ice has definitely been pretty good players. I don't know why Spoto hate Bugs. Uh, did Juan not make the list? Now I gotta put Juan on the list, man. But I, but here go Juan. Let's put Juan on the list. Juan, I, I think we all Juan is the man, man. That's my guy. Love Juan. Uh, Juan got to have a little more success in the MCS, man. He lost his club this year. Never really made any live events other than (laughs) 
then uh the the like I said the Niners Club Series. He beat Forty Nine er. He beat Earl. I think once. Uh, so Juan definitely got. He's been pretty decent. But I mean, come on, man. We got to do a little bit more. If you matter of fact, let me do this real quick. Let me put my man Tony up here before Juan. We're putting suspect before Juan. Juan after suspect. That's what we're gonna have right now. Bang. So suspect first because he popped Juan in the Forty Nine ers Club Series. Then I mean had the tough task of playing Kiv in the first round and lost to Kiv. But Suspect has always been pretty honestly somebody suspect and somebody I play on the game. Suspect is one of the guys with kids and, and has real work and stuff like that. But Suspect, obviously Kane's brother, always been pretty good at the game. I gotta put him over Juan just because he popped Juan. I, I wouldn't feel right having Juan above Suspect. Suspect would definitely get drafted before Juan. And uh Next, I got – let me see my list now. All right, all my list is – my next pick, I got to go with Chaos. Chaos uh, obviously won one of the live events, Madden, the Madden, uh, whatever they were called, the Challenger events when he beat Mo on that field goal. Uh, that was a huge game. And um, Chaos obviously streams a lot, made the Madden, Madden ultimately last year. Didn't fare too well in the Madden. Funny story about Chaos in the Madden Ultimate League. Oh, I think I was supposed to have, but anyway, funny story about Chaos in the Madden Ultimate League. He was getting popped. He was like one in seven or something. So while we were all sitting in the in the lobby talking about um talking about what I was gonna say, talking about um we were talking about Madden, right? So we see Chaos. Chaos then gave up. He went to the gym. He had his basketball stuff in, and he went and got a little shoot around in to make sure he was healthy, make sure he was ready to go. Um, so he was worried about basketball. He kind of gave up on the Ultimate League. At one point, he was 1-7. Uh, so, but like I said, Chaos, with a lot of his work with YouTube, obviously putting Kiv Game on there and everything. But, no, he's been putting a lot of work into his YouTube and streaming, so that's probably important for a team to draft him. Uh, next pick, I got to put Holly on here. Hollywood obviously had a bad last two years. I don't want to say bad because he's, he's been good, but he's just ain't been performing. But if you talk about Holly in 17 and maybe even 16, Holly probably be top 10 talented players, really. And uh, But the last two years, he really hasn't done anything. He made the, um, the Madden Challenge tournament last year, and uh, he lost. He lost in groups. He was the one that didn't make it out of groups. And uh, but like I said, Holly probably one of the more talented players, and obviously looking at his list, he probably could be like up high over here. I'm not sure, you know. Like I said, once you get past like once you get past like this top five or ten, it's kind of like you can put anybody anywhere really. But Holly would probably definitely get drafted. Uh, and then then I gotta put this is the last pick of the draft. I gotta put my man Vilma out there. I don't care. Vilma is a top 32 Madden player without a doubt. For some reason, he never plays Mutt. He never wants to play Mutt. I don't understand it. Aggravates me as a person, as his friend, because I know he top three. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about what he's done in live events because obviously he's lost. The last three years, Vilma has lost a game to get to the club championship live event. I forget he, whoever he lost to in Buffalo was a lay down, but this year he lost to T. Davis to go to Arizona. And uh, obviously he, he he played regs. All he wanted to do was play regs, but I fully believe my man uh, my man Vilma is a top 32 man player in the world. I guarantee that, you know what I'm saying? And Vilma wins every C4 out there, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, now we got a uh, – What, what, like, like, who, who, like, y'all, y'all crazy. My list of people that got, that got snubbed, I'm going to maybe, hopefully I can put this, like, over here. I don't know what I can do. Oh, we're just moving this whole thing now. All right, let me skip two people, but, all right, can I go down more? Uh, Figgy was probably the number one person that should have been on the list that ain't made the draft. My man Turbo Jeff could have been on the list. Nene, the uh, Rams Club Series champion, could have been on the list. There's a couple other people. Who y'all think, chat? Who do we want? Master. I'm not putting Master or Figgy over Vilma. No. And why do we put Safa over Vilma? Like, y'all, like, that's what I'm saying. What have they done more than Vilma? 
So we saw Safa. Who else y'all think? That's what I'm saying. Like, what had they done? Deliverance, Deliverance is definitely one that got uh got kind of axed. Cause I I think one thing about I spelled that wrong. Oh, there we go. We meant that Deliverance. Deliverance is somebody that I mean, when you watch him play, it's not pretty, but he definitely gets some things done. Uh, and so you gotta respect what he's done, really. I mean, so you're right. Deliverance probably could have been on the list. Master. So, man, listen. Vilma's on my list. What Final Four does Safa make? Are you talking about the club championship? Safa ain't beat a soul in the clubs. Come on, let's let's settle down. Safa ain't beat a soul in clubs. AKG, come on, man. <laughs> Y'all just saying anything. Matt, no, Matt is definitely, Matt could be on the list for real. Master, Master is definitely a... Uh, I don't even know how to spell Matt's their gamer. But Matt could be on the list for sure. He, Matt, Matt's definitely a decent player. A second round. This is this is my second round. Y'all don't see the second round? Y'all want to, like, to, this is my second round. Like, what the hell? But like I said, after like 10, uh, it's really debatable, you know what I'm saying? After 10, it gets pretty crazy, it gets pretty wild. You know what I'm saying? I think this is – I thought Safa was good last year, but I, this is what I'm saying. Like, uh, it's not all about last year. You know? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and Vilma's my guy, so I'm going to pick him regardless. So y'all could just – that could be a bias, but I'm picking him regardless. Yeah, if, you know what I mean? Like, like, bro, like seriously, like you, these top – these bottom 20, like you could pick anybody, really. Why why does this list suck? I feel like this list is pretty good. Mo yeah, you like bottom <laughs> you like bottom twenty. Um, I would be top five. No, I'm not on it. I ain't compete this year. I don't I don't deserve to be on a list. Yeah, see, but Vilma, this is what I gotta understand. Regs is not fucking important other than one other than one tournament. I'm just saying, this. Uh, Sp uh, Spoto is so mad, like he really did. Like Spoto hasn't done shit, shit, shit. See, this is making me mad. It's just a damn list, and you and your feelings. You haven't done shit, dick, nothing, squadoosh. All people know you for is complaining and running off the stage like a little fucking girl. You haven't done shit. Stop acting like you need to be on somebody's list. That shit aggravates me, man. Damn. Like, imagine being that mad about that shit. Like, bro, that shit's corny as hell. I heard enough of that. He the only one that's really, like, mad about the shit. Anybody can make a little list. Like, what the hell? It's not that deep. It's really not that deep. Like, <laughs> like bro, like, he <laughs> really in his feelings about the shit. Like, <laughs> like imagine being in your feelings about it. Like, that shit made me mad, man. Like it's people like honestly out of this whole list, Holly 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 has probably had a better career than than than, than thirty one, and Beast Mode won a belt. They can complain, but the people over here suck a dick. What have, like seriously? I can't get over uh, that shit. Made me mad, dude. No, this list sucks. No, I gotta be higher for who for what? Cause you made two DC events, and won a club with 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 three janitors in it. And lost the first game to another janitor? Get the God, that shit made me mad, man. I'm like out. Like, bro, this shit is crazy. Bro, that's crazy, man. Like, bro, that's crazy. Like, it's just a list. People really in their Bro, listen, if you're in your feelings about my list of who would get drafted. I mean, then, honestly, what what is your life? What else do you have to worry about in your life, really? Oh, Volt could probably be up there, honestly, somewhere. Volt, you're right. Volt, Volt was a kind of a snub. 
for the last couple of years. Volt's been pretty good the last couple of years, man. But I, I don't know if he'd make the top 30. Drag up here, Goofy. Oh, T. Davis beat Kev. And T. Davis been around. T. Davis hasn't been around for two years. Like, and they all right here. You act like, oh, this means they're better than him. Like, bruh. Drag right here. Drag right here. No, nah, J-Wall good where he at. He really ain't do shit. J-Wall, a lot of these people really ain't do shit, really. Like, like, let's, like, really ain't do shit. Bro, like, that's what I'm saying. Who are we taking off? And don't nobody say Vilma. Problem is right here. He's fifth. He's definitely top five. Definitely, de you know, I'm definitely taking the high school kids over the janitors. Undrafted picks. I mean, that's a lot of people that's undrafted right now, man. Hey, prob. See, prob. I feel like this is a good list. Prob, check in. I feel like this is a good list. Spoto just in his feelings. That's all. That's not even a pain. It's just a draft. Yeah, I ain't even put myself. They mad at me. I mean, it, it can all be questionable, but it's not bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Holly could be higher. I really, honestly, I kind of almost forgot about Holly making this list right here. Like, I, I sat down for like an hour and made this list. Because... I don't even see Holly at, at – I don't even see him, like, in the chats. I don't even see – like, you know what I'm saying? I don't really don't even talk to Holly like that. Like, I used to, like, two years ago. It's just it's just different. I don't know. I just, I just completely forgot about him. So, if we take Holly and we move Holly to, like – if we switch Holly with Lil' Man, if we put Lil' Man here, which I think is low for Lil' Man, Bang, let's look better. Chat, let's look better. No, nah, stiff like stiff like over here. Like if I could I don't even I don't even know how to like write over here. But if I could write over here, stiff would be over there. Joe, I mean, I, I, I kind of legitimately think Jay Wall is better than you. He's better than you at the game right now. Am I lying? If I'm lying, I'm dying. I said this year, this year mean the most out of anybody, really. I don't think the list that bad. I told you, once you get around the bottom 20 where Mo at, <laughs> it gets, I mean, it's pretty much like it's pick and choose, really. Nah, CJ or K-Mac, they ain't really make no event to even put them up there. Who got zero live events? It's a lot, actually, I, I feel like Juan got zero live events, too. I mean, Killer Mike, Killer Mike, he got a little gripe. He got, I mean, oh, he ain't really do nothing this year too much. I'm glad we having this discussion, though. Vilma is on the list because that's my guy, all right? He's going to be on the list. And I think Vilma's top 32-man player, all right? So stop bringing up the Vilma situation. Vilma would get drafted, all right? End the discussion. Bugs need to be – nah, Bugs don't need to be no higher. Like I said, if Bugs ain't make this live event, he would have got been all the way off the list. Nah, balling you up is on the Stiffmeister list over here. Speaking of balling you up, if balling you up wife allows it, we will be doing the podcast from balling you up house tomorrow next week. We will be in balling you up's crib with his A1 setup doing the podcast. You know what I'm saying? 
Listen, I'm telling you, Bugs might not have made the list, but since he made this last live event, he's on the he's on the list. Look, man, I had you higher. I had you like right. I had you right where Holly was, but then they made a good point. Holly should have been higher. I agree. I do agree. I almost, I, I completely like forgot about Holly until I got to the end of the list, and uh, so we switched you off a little bit. But really, I think little man. Let's put a put. Let's put little man. Let's switch little man and. Ah uh, man, I think we can switch little man and prodigy. Am I lying? I think we can put Prodigy right here. We put Lil' Man right here. I don't think anybody be mad at that. Right, chat? We ain't mad at that. Juan, what are you talking about you made a... Juan, Juan, you're better than me. Juan, I'm not even on the list. Why are y'all talking to me? I'm not even on the list. Yeah, well, Vilma, you should spend $500 on mutt packs. I mean, <laughs> that's the dumbest thing you've said. Like, yes, if you're good at man, you should be buying mutt packs. Yes. <laughs> Carrie, cause Carrie, I I I believe in Carrie. I don't. I really don't remember. Yeah, CJ might have made it a top eight in classic. <laughs> now, Vilma, he in here. Wesley is higher than Mo. Um. Wesley's had a little more success this year. He just made another event. I mean, that's why, that's pretty much why. I mean, you can make the art. Like I said, Mo got Mo had a bad two years. It's kind of like kind of like Holly, like where they obviously they're really good players, but Mo the last two years has had bad two years as far as MCS. Wesley's Wesley kind of on the up and coming man. He's he's on place to go ahead and make the Man Bowl. He needs a good run in this tournament. Had a little more success this year. That's why I got Wesley higher like that. No, I th and I honestly, I think Wesley's. I, I honestly, I, I, as much as I hate Wesley, and Wesley is on the headlock list, along with Jay Wall, Henry Allen. It's a lot of people on the head. I don't know if Henry all the way on the Henry. And, and honestly, Henry would be on this list, but he's too young, and hopefully, hopefully, make a run in the last chance. Henry would be on this list for sure, because Henry's probably like top fifteen, top twenty. But obviously, he hasn't competed yet, so he can't really be on the list. Deliverance, because club series, bro. Club series, I tell you, and honestly, the most impressive thing Deliverance did was win that club series with Chaos and, and uh, Lawrence and all them guys. They were pretty a pretty decent club. But club series, a lot of people just hanging on club series. Club series is not, bro. Bro, Velma is on the list, Kent. Yeah, but Prab, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like he ain't compete, but I would put, but like I said, I would probably put Henry over he would definitely be in like the 15 area cuz i know i already know henry's henry's like top 15 player no doubt about it oh oh here we go i know what i'm doing pro but anyway that's my list man and like i said this all right here is cool i mean safa i mean safa's pretty good he got an argument but it's to me it's like Okay, that's what Safa made Ultimate League because of Club Series, which he beat Killer Cam. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's not I, – I, I feel like Club Series really distorts what we're talking about because a lot of people – Club Series, I don't want to say it's easy, but it's not – like, it's not – you know what I'm saying? It's not the hardest thing in the world. Like, even looking at Drag, like, Drag and – like, who has Drag beat in the last – he beat Canes off that Derrick Henry truck stick. But as far as winning his club, who did he beat in the Packers club is my point. Like, y'all put too much stake on winning the actual club. And then who they, to me, it's like who they beat. You know what I mean? Like, who did they beat to get there is more impressive to me than, than making a run. You know, that's all I'm saying. I understand it was a lot, but I just want to say my point is, like, who did they beat is important to me, honestly. I'm saying I just I mean well Wesley beat 
I mean, you're right. He beat CJ. You're right. Wesley, I mean, but, Mo, a lot of what Wesley was, he actually qualified for the last event. He actually got blown out twice. You know what I'm saying? He got blown out twice in clubs, but he did qualify for the next event, the Madden Challenge, coming up. So that 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 way the line to putting Wesley up there. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't be mad if y'all told me to put Wesley down here with, like, Spoto and Ice and these guys over here. I wouldn't be mad at that. But I just think Wesley – I just think uh, my personal – like, wh me watching people play and playing against people, I think Wesley's pretty good. That's all. Mo, y'all playing Players Lounge? Vilma got money on Players Lounge. Why y'all all coming for Vilma, man? What he do to y'all? Like, damn, I can't put him on my list. But anyway, this is my list, man. What I want y'all to do, all y'all have y'all have your own list and everything. Make a list, man. This is tough to do. I really sat down for like 40 minutes trying to make a list. Really, my biggest thing was I didn't want to forget anybody that's around this level, you know, and just give people some type of recognition. I feel like the top five and ten is pretty pretty locked. But then once I said, once you get down to here, it's pretty much anywhere you can go as far as man is concerned. Like I said, I did not include myself in these lists. I don't know where I would wind up. It's really not – I'm not that big a deal. Long. <laughs> it's not that big a deal to me. But uh, it's fun to do. The NBA draft was tonight, the NBA 2K League, man. So that's really dope that uh, people get drafted. They get paid 35000 base salary for the year to play for – I think I think only – they're going to – the Sixers are actually coming to town next month, I want to say. Actually, it might be the next week, like in a week. And I'm definitely going to have a podcast with Steez and hopefully Radiant, hopefully uh, Denny and uh, whatchamacallit, and Scratty down here. We can have a whole little uh, Sixers 2K, talk about the, the eSports, talk about the 2K League and everything like that. But next week, I tell you, I will be at my man Ballin' Use Up Crib. We're going to have... From Balling You Up House with his cats and you know what I'm saying and his supreme setup, we will be there definitely. So like I said, I want you guys to go ahead and make a uh, make a list of what you think the draft would be. Who would get drafted first? Who would get drafted? And who would get left out? Man, obviously my biggest thing with that draft was to make sure everybody got a little recognition. Recognition. I think once you get outside the top ten, there's a lot of names that could be put on there. So if you think anybody got stiffed, please hit the comment. Let me know. Uh, next week we'll probably be talking about getting prepared for the man challenge, man, who we like coming out of groups, who we like uh, moving on. That's probably going to be a big topic next week. I've been working on some big things coming forward, some big interviews, uh, trying my best to uh, continue to keep the show moving, man. And, and, you know, Madden, like I said, there's only been two live events so far. Haven't had a lot of Madden to watch on stream, and you guys have still been supporting the podcast. So it's best for me to go ahead and uh, keep these ideas going keep the momentum of the show going and you know like i said i need support from you guys and you guys have shown it in the chat you have shown it on youtube so please hit that like button and comment on who you think i snubbed and where you think my list was wrong man i really appreciate you guys this was needed podcast episode 20 i appreciate all you guys from coming through